Before we get into it, let's remind ourselves of what the definition of a terrorist is. A person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims. Not sure why that's going to be of interest in today's video, but let's find out, shall we? As we discuss the lunacy of eco-warrior protesters in Germany this week who have admitted setting fire to a high-voltage pylon, resulting in roughly 2,000 people, homes, businesses and Tesla's Giga Berlin, their main target, losing power. The state of Brandenburg's Interior Minister Michael Stubgen spoke of a perfidious attack on the electricity infrastructure. And yes, I learnt a new word today. Perfidious, deceitful and untrustworthy. Left-wing extremists have claimed responsibility for the terrorist attack. Sorry, did I say terrorist attack? I meant pathetic, pointless, senseless, idiotic terrorist attack. Clearly carried out by a bunch of moronic, thoughtless prats. For if they did use their brains for just a second and think critically about their evil Tesla target, they might just run into a few awkward facts that we'll get to in a minute. In a two and a half thousand word letter released on Tuesday, the Vulcan activist group claimed responsibility for the attack, saying the factory consumed both natural resources and labour and was neither ecological or sustainable. I hope this is clear to everybody. Be warned if you are a business or homeowner for they can just as easily come for you next. Unless, of course, you are 100% ecological and sustainable with receipts. Over on Electric, in protest against the planned expansion of the Tesla factory in Brandenburg, activists from a broad alliance occupied the pine forest near the Tesla factory in Grunheimd. Activists from Robin Wood, OK, that's a good name, I'll give you that, are also on site today and have attached a wooden platform in one of the treetops under the motto, Forest Instead of Monster Factory, where climbers can linger. I didn't even know Tesla made monsters, did you? Well, the cyber beast, I suppose. They are demanding that Tesla and those responsible for the municipality, state and federal government do everything they can to stop the expansion of Giga Berlin and promote a climate-friendly mobility transition. That's their demand. Everybody stop producing anything unless it ticks their magical box of climate-friendly mobility transition. What even is that? Everybody travel on unicycles from now on because it produces less tyre wear. What are these Muppets smoking? Nothing, of course. That would be bad for the environment. Yeah, right. Tesla has been the target of these environmental activists for many years now, even before Giga Berlin was built. Why, you might be wondering, would a bunch of eco-hippies be angry at Tesla? Tesla is, after all, responsible for switching the entire world's automotive industry towards electrification and away from burning fossil fuels. Fact! You know, producing cars that can run on sunshine and will have their batteries recycled into new ones at the end of their lives, as 95% of the valuable chemicals within EV batteries can be recycled into new ones, which will become cheaper than mining for new materials. This is the answer to the question you are asking. Tesla is the climate-friendly mobility transition you are looking for. You just need to build it all first, and then it becomes a sustainable, energy-abundant future. Tony Sieber at RethinkX, as well as Tesla, have shown us the calculations and worked out that the entire planet could be self-sustaining if all countries worked together towards harnessing renewable energy from solar, wind, hydro and more, coupled with massive battery energy storage systems, which would one day give us a sustainable electric economy. But guess what? You can't magic it into place. You've got to build it first. If your mind is struggling to imagine a sustainable future, that's normal. But here's a thought experiment for you. Just consider the tens of thousands of homes around the world today that are generating power from solar panels on their roof, then storing that energy in Tesla power walls or other home batteries for that matter, then use that electricity when the sun goes down. Oh, and power your electric car on sunshine too. Rinse and repeat every day. It's already a reality for those that have invested in it. Scale that up to power a town or city and you get this. A Tesla Megapack battery system recently led the state of Hawaii to bid farewell to its last coal power plant, ushering in a new era powered by clean renewable energy. Now expand projects like these to country-sized projects. And yes, we've got some work to do to get us there, but there is no reason in physics we can't build this future. Just remember, 100 square miles of solar panels plus battery storage would be enough electricity to power the entirety of America. And Tesla, that company these protests are fighting against, are doing more than any other company on earth to make this future a reality. You know, talk about getting the wrong end of the stick. How are these supposed adults so incapable of critical thinking? They are vilifying the wrong company. 
Are they really this stupid? Maybe. Might they have been deliberately brainwashed and stirred into action by, I don't know, big oil companies, legacy auto companies, basically anybody with a vested interest in slowing Tesla down? Ooh, what a conspiracy. Let me know your thoughts below. Elon Musk writes on X, These are either the dumbest eco-terrorists on earth, or they're puppets of those who don't have good environmental goals. He added, Stopping production of electric vehicles rather than fossil fuel vehicles is extreme dumb, he said, switching to the German phrase meaning extremely dumb. Also on X, Brian Basin writes, Germany, no Tesla is safe. Anarchist vow as mysterious Vulcan group declares war on Elon Musk after Giga Berlin was left without power following an arson attack on power infrastructure nearby its plant. The arson follows a series of strikes on Tesla cars and charging stations, in which this group might also be involved. It is not the first time this group is suspected of an arson attack against Tesla. A hit at the construction site at Grunheide damaged several power cables in 2021. A few ironic points of interest. Pillocks like these are setting up tree houses in the very forests that have been planted deliberately to be cut down as they are managed forests, forests grown to provide saw timber and reoccurring revenue for landowners. It's not an ancient woodland like the ones our UK government has pointlessly destroyed in preparation for the now cancelled HS2 railway line that might have been worth fighting for, especially as the money wasted from HS2 could have paid for every home in the UK to be insulated. But these forests in Berlin are deliberate plantations whereby the wood they produce is used for wood. It's not a natural forest. And just to throw more fuel on the fire of these eco-brainiacs, Tesla have planted more trees than originally removed in this area, and will continue to do so all over again as they have agreed to plant a tree for every one they remove. But nope, that's still not good enough for the very well mentally balanced critical thinking geniuses of these eco-terrorist cults. I am one letter off there, aren't I? Oh, let's not forget the water. Another one of these eco-warriors' brilliant points was that Tesla used too much water in their car manufacturing process. Oh, let's just ignore how much water was needed to extinguish that deliberate arson attack on a pylon, shall we? Let alone the others you've been accused of. And look at some facts instead. Tesla is below the car industry average regarding water consumption, thanks to electric vehicles using less water than combustion cars. In fact, Giga Berlin is one of the most efficient factories in the world based on water consumed per vehicle. If you bothered researching it, that is. Tesla has honed its water saving techniques, achieving an industry record of 1.8 cubic metres per car. The battery pack adds 0.48 cubic metres for a total of 2.28 cubic metres per vehicle, slightly more than BMW, but lower than Mercedes-Benz, 2.91 square metres, and Volkswagen Group, 3.75 metres squared. Why aren't you protesting outside those factories, I wonder? Was Dieselgate not enough for you to get your knickers in a twist, or start making tree houses in the nearest twig? Yeah, that old chestnut of German cars producing up to 40 times more nitrogen oxides than allowed by law. 13 million diesel cars producing extreme levels of toxic air pollution are still on the roads here in Europe and the UK, seven years after the Dieselgate scandal first exploded. Where was your phony, confused outrage over that genuine, disgraceful, deliberate action from your homegrown car companies? Personally, I don't know how anybody who knowingly understands what Volkswagen and many others now got up to with their defeat devices that were cheating emissions testing, how could you possibly give your money to a car company that represents that level of disgusting corruption and deceit? Please do let me know in the comments below how you justify supporting such companies. Oh, but they've changed. No, they haven't. They just keep getting caught over and over again. But it's not just Volkswagen, is it? This is just a handful of car companies that are currently under investigation for emissions cheating devices. But of course, Tesla, Tesla bad. bad. Oh God, my brain hurts. So having Tesla fully address the two main concerns of environmental activists at Giga Berlin, water usage and deforestation, it's still not good enough for them. Despite every new electric vehicle leaving the factory, is one less diesel or petrol that would otherwise start its decade-long pollution journey into the lungs of children. And if there's still any doubt of the full lifetime emissions of an EV versus an internal combustion engine car, including all materials necessary to build them, please take the time to understand this chart. 
It's a fact, not an opinion, that EVs, no matter hypothetically how dirty the electricity supply might be for them, will always have a far better life cycle of carbon emissions. And as our grid gets cleaner each year with wind, solar and other forms of sustainable energy, so too will everybody's electric cars. It's the future, people. We must embrace it. As a quick example, the electricity that has powered my car in the UK over the past year has been generated from a whopping 41% renewable energy, and just 1% of those fossil fuels coming from burning coal by the way. It's clear that renewable energy is growing with each year that passes, and that our future might well depend on us having clean air to breathe, as well as enough energy to power our electric future. Environmental groups going after Tesla who are having a net positive impact on the environment leads me to ponder, are these protesters really that dumb? Or are there darker forces at play, trying to stoke outrage and infighting amongst crazed left-wingers? Whilst other companies continue their real negative impact businesses, it wouldn't be the first time that fossil fuel interests have backed environmentalist groups, and if protesters are willing to set fire to electrical infrastructure amongst other things, the question needs to be raised. How long before someone is killed? What are their motives and future intentions for you? After all, they are terrorists, endangering the lives and intimidating others. These ecomaniacs need to be stopped and held accountable for their actions. I really want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you've not quite got your fix of stupidity today, here's a video I've lined up whereby UK Luddites have said no to a filthy, highly polluting, very, very dangerous, on the verge of exploding, battery energy storage system. I wish I was joking. Thanks as always to my amazing Patreon supporters. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.